students get scammed a hell of a lot it literally happens all the time it is not a joke they literally will try and rinse students of every penny they own hey guys it's nicole here back with another video i hope you're all well and keeping safe in today's video i'm going to be speaking about moving out of accommodation university accommodation into flats and houses in your second and third year how the process goes because a few of you have been asking me and a few of you are confused about the whole process which is perfectly normal and perfectly reasonable and it's hard to know unless you've actually been through the process as well as that i'm going to give you guys my tips and tricks and little things that you should look out for when moving out of halls traditionally freshers or first years have priority when moving into a university accommodation or what's known as halls. Now, these sort of policies do vary per university, but I know that the general consensus from the universities is they give all people coming to university for the first time a helping hand in living in their university-led accommodation. And in doing that, most of the time, the bills and everything's included in the rent. It is then up to you to decide who you want to live with, where you want to live with. Now, you can go about this in a number of ways. You can look via your SU, your student's union. They have a lot of properties which are for students and they sometimes try to make them more student friendly prices, which is a, a plus of going through the SU. Alternatively, and the most commonly used route is through estate agents. Now, through the estate agents and the sort of online agencies, you can pick the type of house you want to live in, the number of bathrooms, bedrooms, etc., as well as the price range. Now, not everyone may be able to or want to move out of halls, and there is the option to stay in halls again. However, this is limited, and certain accommodations and certain universities have specific criteria about how and where you can live in halls again so it's really important to make sure for the specific university that you're interested in or maybe going in september to look and check at the opportunity to stay there again it may be that they have a different halls where they allow second years back for example or there's a certain criteria for example being international ways you can go about finding your house if you haven't you know organically formed a friendship group is Facebook, via the university. A lot of universities provide sort of networks to meet other people looking for houses. Facebook, I know like throughout my time at uni, a lot of people posted things on Facebook about finding people to live with. So that's another route. There's also sort of flats that already have the rooms there and they're just looking for the people to fill. So if you don't mind living with strangers, there's always those opportunities as well. I'm going to speak a little bit now about my process of moving out of halls to give you guys a little bit of insight and a better understanding as to what a journey from halls to living in a house and a flat is. So I signed my tenancy agreement for my second year very, very early on when I was in my first year. We established a group, there were six of us in total. We knew that we wanted to live in a certain area. We kind of had similar price ranges and we knew what kind of house we wanted. So we went and found an estate agent and we used their search search engine and then we found a couple houses, we were looking at viewings and then we signed our house that same year, a couple months after starting uni. So it was all kind of quite easy, quite straightforward. I'm gonna give you guys some tips on what I think you should look out for when moving out of halls, some things to be aware of, and just to make sure that you're basically on the right path to making sure that you are getting a good property when you're leaving first year. My first tip is to see if you can try and find overlapping tenancies. Now, what this means for those people who don't know what tenancy agreement is, is basically the contract of the length, the length of time that you are gonna be staying at that property. So for example, in my first year, my tenancy agreement ended June, and then for my new place for second year, my tenancy agreement started in June. That way, I didn't have to put any of my stuff in storage, I didn't have to take it back home to London, which would have just been a massive faff, and it just would have been extra effort and the overlapping tenancy meant I literally could take my stuff from one house into another. 
alternatively if you aren't able to do this you can hold your stuff in storage and you can do sort of like a group thing with your house but i find it's one less stress if your tenancy does overlap i know some properties don't always have that and it's best not to just tailor getting a property just because the tenancy overlaps next i recommend to either a have someone who's got a parent or even knows themselves the rules and regulations and the policies of properties and renting in HMOs to make sure that you do not get scammed. It is not a joke and students get scammed a hell of a lot because sometimes they won't read the contract, they haven't got sort of like experience and knowledge in housing. So estate agents and landlords see that as a perfect opportunity to take advantage and to try and make as much money as possible. It literally happens all the time. It is not a joke. They literally will try and rinse students of every penny they own. I really, really recommend if there's one of you in your group who knows about property and you know, all, all those kind of things, or you have a parent, one of you guys' parents knows that, make sure they are heavily involved in the process and reading the contract. For example, the they stopped doing agency fees, they stopped charging agency fees of June of 2020. If your estate agent is still trying to you know make you pay an agency fee they're trying to scam you and some students may just be like oh okay like first time people moving into a hmo may not know about this and they may think that oh it's just kind of the norm and when you do or you've researched and you actually find out that is not part of what is now allowed you know not to get caught out alternatively you can also do your research and you know just try and find things out there that are you know giving you the right information to make sure that no one is losing their money no one is getting scammed that is all for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed let me know if it was helpful if you guys want any more videos about uni moving in the process comment down below message me on instagram i answer all my dms make sure you are subscribed give this video a massive thumbs up and i will see you guys in the next video